<laughs> All right, creatures of the night. Welcome to Talking Taker, a very special bonus episode here on your podcast feed and on YouTube. My name is Alex Dorio. I am one half of the Creatures of the Night, one half of the Pod Street crew right here, and I want to welcome you to yet another round of Dead Man Talking. I am joined, as always, by my tag team partner, my wrestling buddy, uh, my fellow creature of the night. He is the uh, manscaper of the hour right here, Mr. Travis White, looking fresh as always. And I say that, man, because our, our partners, Manscaped, they are back with us again. Uh, they are sponsoring this very special episode. And uh, it's a very special episode because uh, to celebrate that partnership with Manscaped, we uh, ran a little contest on the Talking Taker Twitter account account at Talking Taker. Uh, we asked our Creatures of the Night, our Pod Street crew out there to show us your receipts. Show us that you use the code TAKEREASY at manscaped.com to get 20% off your order and free shipping. And we would randomly draw somebody to join us here for a special episode of the podcast, an episode of their choosing. They get to pick any match they wanted to watch along with me and you, Travis. And uh, very excited to have this gentleman here with us. Uh, not familiar with him. Uh, it's it's uh, Rondi Tyrico. Rondi Tyrico is here joining us. Uh, how you doing there, pal? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Oh, uh, oh great, that's Randy. Yeah, wait it's a Randy second. Randy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my bad. I know you. Yeah, I often get uh, Ryan Terso. That's usually what people call me, <laughs> Ryan Terso. Wow. So Ryan we're close. Terso. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good to be back with you guys uh, on the Manscaped episode, no less. And and I know we try to keep it PG here, but would it be altogether uncouth to ask you guys to scissor me on this, <laughs> on this that's, uh, oh, wow. your cut episode? That's not official Manscaped scissors, so <laughs> very true. But I, allow that. I've got I've got those two. I've got these two. Exactly. That's supposed to put the scissors to rest. The lawnmower, oh, yeah. the weed whacker right there. Travis's favorite, the old weed whacker. Oh, yeah. My beak, dude. <laughs> you know what the lawnmower is really good for, aside from the obvious? But uh, uh, I don't know. I'm Italian, so I get a lot of the – I don't get so much the neck beard. I get the uh, reverse behind mm -hmm. the, the back of the neck beard. Yep. And so this is good about halfway through your uh, haircut cycle. I like doing right. this. Yeah. That's a good point, man. I always let that area get out of control. My wife gets on me. She has to get back there and do it. So uh, that's a great point. But uh, now, seriously, R Randy did win this fair and square. You know, this may seem uh, like a work, but uh, we, right. did we did actually have a few people enter more than just Randy. Uh, they were mostly friends of the show. But uh, Randy, you know, I did a random drawing and Randy was the winner fair and square. And uh, he did participate. He, he showed us the receipt uh, and he used that code for 20% off at manscaped.com. So we are honored to have him along uh you know he had to win his way on the show but we're honored to have him along i'm sure we would have had him along and get at some point but uh, he is joining the four timers club here on talking taker officially he's had some run-ins and other uh guest appearances on other episodes but four official guest appearances here randy and uh man extra exciting because on the day we're recording this uh you and i Purchase SummerSlam tickets for here for 2023 in Detroit, Michigan, man. So uh, we are going to finally meet after, what, five and a half years uh, of uh, being virtual friends. Yeah, I'm really excited. We're going to meet up. Uh, we always talked about if there was a big show, an Undertaker show, or, or um, a pay-per-view. big, big show? show? Not the big show. Not your, <laughs> not your brother. Uh, uh, exactly. Yo. <laughs> right. Uh, but if there was a big show somewhere centrally located, we would meet. And I was thinking somewhere warm i don't know florida or maybe down by you guys but somehow we're going to meet up in the murder city in detroit very <laughs> lovely uh at in august at that time of year but uh detroit rock city man detroit out eight rock city. i'm excited Awesome. Yeah, well, uh, you and I, uh, Travis, you got uh, a million plans. About that 140 day. things on that Saturday that are planned. Saturday. So yeah, I'm gonna have to kiss all of them goodbye except for the, my dad's 70th birthday. So yeah. that's reasonable. We're we're, we're glad he's right. celebrating that. Right. So uh, we we won't get too mad yeah. at you. But other friend of the show, Stephen Zeman from Collecting Dead Man, is uh, in on this trip along with a couple of your buddies, Randy. So uh, it's gonna be a grand old time, and I'm sure we'll be talking about that more here on the podcast. Probably have some bonus content from SummerSlam weekend we'll be dropping to you but man I'm stoked can't wait so there'll be no more of this virtual insanity then huh? mm. <laughs> we won't be living in that Jamiroquai no you're, right, you're welcome right. 
you'll find out I'm a, I'm a real 3D person. Uh, a not real just boy. a 2D. Yeah, yeah I'm a real boy. That's right. You have a bottom half. I do. I do have a. I do have a torso. Yes. It's like the opposite of Calvin Chicken's parents. Remember them? Like, uh, the I do remember that. Yes. Calvin Chicken's parents were just like the bodies from the waist down. So anyway, I digress. <laughs> oh, you never know what you're gonna get on Talk and Taker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't That's expecting hot, a cow and chicken reference within the first five minutes, but there we I'll are. Bring to the table. <laughs> so, uh, considering this is a Manscaped special, Randy, you know, he always rises to the occasion. He brings the themes to the party. So, Randy, tell us uh, why you chose what you chose for us to cover here for Watch Along on the special bonus edition. Sure. Yeah. When you said, "Hey, you you won. You legitimately won." There were some. There were yeah. other people other than you, <laughs> and uh, and so I I was started thinking like what off the wall match can we do something that hasn't been covered before or at least you guys haven't done a watch along for before and the more and more i thought about it i thought instead of going down the i've never heard of this match rabbit hole this is all about manscaped and haircuts why don't we celebrate the undertaker's haircuts throughout the years so right. uh, you know podcasts are stereotypical for you know just going over celebrities appearances celebrities hair why don't we actually do that and talk about the Undertaker's <laughs> different hair over the years? So I, I proposed calling this episode "Shave and a Haircut Two Bits" because we've all heard dun, 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 bum, bum. Yep. So like, let's do "Shave and a Haircut Two Bits." So the the uh, shave would be when he shaved his hair before WrestleMania 28, or he shaved his wig before right. WrestleMania 28. <laughs> yeah. And Always then the, to shave the wig. Right, right. Uh, and then the haircut. Uh, would be when he debuted his um, his short hair for the first time. So he, when he debuted in 1990, he at least had a mullet, and then that just grew and grew and grew. Eventually, he he during his big evil days, he he just lopped it off for no reason and just showed up on SmackDown with hair that looked like mine or Travis's, you know. So <laughs> so like let's go through that match. So we celebrate his shave and his haircut, and maybe with the two bits, we'll we'll go through at the end and talk a little bit about our favorite Undertaker hair look. I love it. Was not expecting Perfect. that. Uh, sadly, uh, I think we've confirmed that there are no Undertaker versus Brutus the Barber beefcake matches in history. It looks like uh, I mean, I'm hoping so. <laughs> Gotten and strutting up for that. <laughs> Golly, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, he uh, Brutus, you know, uh, blew his face up in that parasailing accident, <laughs> like. Uh, Two months before Undertaker debuted in 1990, uh, then he, you know, came back in '93, uh, a little run with uh, there with Hulk Hogan, uh, but Undertaker was a big face. Say. So <laughs> <Yeah>. always, <laughs> and then he went off. You know, he was the Zodiac uh, and the Disciple and the Man with No Name, the Butcher Man, uh, whatever, the Booty Man over in WCW. Yeah. So uh, the uh, Zodiac versus Undertaker could have been a fun little feud there. That would have been great. I was digging. I was digging so hard for a, a barber versus Undertaker match for this. And I'm like, no, they never touched. Doesn't so there's still, there's still meat on the bone for WrestleMania 40. I'm just saying. It's out there. <laughs> Two Hall of Famers. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please. Well, let's cue it up, man. Let's uh, let's do this. Uh, so tell us what this first match that we're going to cover. We're going to cover the uh, – we'll, we'll do it in reverse order. We'll do the haircut uh, before we do the shave here because it's uh, – sure. we'll save that for the main event. Sure. Yeah. So the uh, the haircut is the uh, season three, episode 49 episode of SmackDown. Uh, this is three days before Vengeance 01 when he takes on RVD for the hardcore title. So he is feuding with RVD at the moment. And I scanned through before the match. I kind of just kind of scrubbed through and saw any Undertaker moments. And this is, uh, of course, Undertaker has turned heel when he made JR kiss Vince's A double crooked letter. <clears throat> and, and yeah. uh, you know, because. Nobody's done it more than The Undertaker, JR saying he's better than him. And um, so I think now this we're to the point in the SmackDown where Vince has to kiss The Rock's posterior now. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're that's what they're doing on this episode. Um, and earlier in the episode, The Undertaker actually destroys Rob Van Dam on the stage after his match with Matt Hardy. So he destroys him. He actually and, does. It doesn't he do the old uh, RVD yeah. finger point? I, I think I've got a picture of that somewhere on yeah. my Instagram account because it was a <clears throat> very funny image. And Taker's arms looked pretty good when he was doing it. He's like, he did it real slow and mocking. Like, yeah. man, his biceps are really popping, man. And he good nailed for it. Him. <laughs> right. Uh, 
So um, later on, Undertaker's walking by the APA card table. They're playing cards, God, and then so uh, Taker's now a heel, so he stops and is like, why are you eyeballing me, man? And then the APA talks about how they got history with the Undertaker, and they feel like they're they're owed an explanation on why he he's doing what he's doing lately. And uh, Taker says that they must not respect him if they're treating him this way, and they think that he owes them anything. And so a challenge ensues, and a match is made. Undertaker versus Acolyte or APA Bradshaw for apparently no reason other than this little setup here, which I kind of like those matches uh, here on SmackDown. And Undertaker just comes out with a haircut, like no announcement, no explanation. Nobody says anything. He's just comes out with a haircut after 12 years, 11 years in the business. So uh, it's a fun little five minute match, but it's it's uh, it's nice. And it does set up the RVD pay-per-view match quite well. Yeah, no reason, no explanation, no hair versus hair match or anything. It's just, uh, he's a heel. Uh, he's made this heel turn for the first time since 92, basically. Or, well, excuse me. No, he had the Ministry of Darkness. Of no, course. Ministry, yeah. Uh, but, but the first time in a while, he's made this uh, dramatic heel turn and changed his character. Uh, and he's changed his look, shaved those beautiful black flowing locks, and, and has that uh, short haircut now. Uh very shocking moment. Uh, what did you think watching that? I know you were a much bigger Undertaker fan than us uh, back in 2001. Uh, how did that hit you? I was shocked because there was no payoff or match for it, but I was, I, I kind of liked it because I've always been a short hair guy. I was like, all right, Undertaker coming to the dark side. All bad guys have short hair apparently. So, <laughs> and he's showing off that weird, that, that, that skeleton tattoo thing he's got in the back of his neck. So he's showing mm-hmm. that off too, you know? No, it looked good. It, uh, it was a good look. It was a good move. I think it really differentiated him, set him apart. Uh, an important thing in his character to do here. So uh, let's cue it up, man. What's our uh, timestamp? What are we looking at here to watch this quickie? I have it on uh, 105.25 if you want, just where the you know, skip entrances and go right to the bell. 105.25. All right, we can do that. 105.25. Well, while we're getting that set up and queued yes. up. Go ahead, Travis. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if I'm not mistaken, this would be, um, this era would be where, truth be told, Alex does all the heavy lifting here on Talking Taker. I just show up and talk. And he does all the editing and stuff. And he, I never want to know what the song is going to be at the end. I think maybe <laughs> three times. Yeah. Maybe three times in six years I've given you a suggestion. Maybe. Maybe five. Anyway, Something. one hand. I don't know. Um, not a lot. But this one popped me probably the most because well, when we talked about him getting his haircut and then you put Devil's haircut by Beck on the end, I just didn't even see it coming. And I laughed <laughs> so much more than I thought I was going to. And it was insane. I called you immediately. I was like, you popped me good, man. It was insane. So, yeah, I will never forget his haircut because of the song that you picked to go with it. Awesome. You know, sometimes the songs are to pop me, sometimes they're to pop you. So, you know, it's just a, it's just a little game. We play a little Easter yeah. game. Uh, I have I have tweeted about Alex's outro game probably more than five times. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, so 105.25. Um, but uh, before we do hit play, let's go ahead and give a shout out to the people that brought us here today to Manscaped. Uh, and uh, we want to encourage you. They're the reason why we're doing this episode here tonight. We want to encourage you to join the 8 million and counting people that have signed up for manscaped.com that have joined the revolution just like we have here and uh, you can join the revolution too uh, and, and experience the finest in men's grooming with 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com uh, brother they've been uh, or brothers uh, they, they reached out to us uh, a couple months ago sent us the uh, beard hedger oh, yeah. uh, the lawn mower the uh, crop preserver lotions uh, the crop reviver the boxers the t-shirt man I use it I use something manscaped almost every day now uh, I, I think I do every single day uh, I only ready. wear their boxers that's the only boxes I wear now. <laughs> it's life changing I have six pair and I only wear them <laughs> Randy Thank you, uh, manscaped you, I, I think you were a manscaper before we were, man. Tell us, you know, why uh, they've been so awesome for you. Yeah, the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Uh, listening to uh, the former Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins' Ooh. podcast for the last three, four years. And um, so we're listening to that. They always talked about it. And I talked about that back of the neck beard thing that I got going. I'm like, I should probably get that. That'd be pretty cool. Not to mention, 
I'm 42 now, and I notice 42, I have more of a need for this and this <laughs> yeah. and the nose and the ears. Right. To prevent, I don't want to look like my dad. I love him to death, but no thanks. Um, <laughs> So I so I did get those. So I had those already. I had the lawnmower already. I had the um, um, the weed whacker. The weed whacker already. Paper, so I had yeah. both already from a couple Christmases ago. But what you guys did when you guys had this thing with Manscaped uh, a couple months ago now or a month ago, I needed new blades. And I'm like, there is no better time than right now. Right. And believe it or not, you would think like, what's the difference like, on a blade on something like this? I can tell the difference. I really can. With there you go. Have to. You got to replace it. Yeah. You don't notice it getting dull over time because it's so incremental and little by little. And then all yeah. of a sudden you put the new one on and you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're cooking. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I said it before. I, I said it the last uh, time we talked about this. This Beard Hedger is unquestionably the best beard uh, trimmer I have used uh, in my entire life. Uh, talking to a couple baby faces over here. But uh, as the one who tries to keep this beard neat over here, this um, having the 20 different... Uh, clicks you can do on here to, to change the settings on there. You can pop it off, uh, get the cheeks, get the neck hair as well. I absolutely love this thing. It's changed my life. I love that this and the lawnmower, they're waterproof. You can take them in the shower so you can cut down on that grooming time. Uh, take care Sporkle of everything all in one place. Take it in the pool if you want this yeah. summer. July 4th, just be in there. Hey, no. cool. <laughs> Change it up. You check your HOA regulations, but uh, you know, take it in the pool with you or not. Um, I use that thing on these bad boys. The the right here. Keep them tight. Yep. Had these since I was, what, 15, 16? And uh, almost, almost let them go a few weeks ago with the Manscaped. I didn't check the... Uh, <laughs> check the, the, the length on that thing and uh yeah almost oh, almost man. let them go it's got so, more yeah, power it's good oh, oh, oh. it does it's, it's <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. yeah benford baby well <laughs> i wish that was this that the benford <laughs> <laughs> Well, as we're talking about the Undertaker changing looks, I just want to encourage all the guys out there listening. You know, it's okay to change your look up. It's okay to pay attention to your grooming. The Undertaker, the manliest man uh, that ever manned, uh, you would not think he's a guy who really cared about his look all that much. But he does, man. He takes care of that, that goatee, takes care of that hair, he keeps it nice and neat. Uh, and that's so huge. And I think as guys, as we get older, we forget about that. We get lazy. We don't care. But man, uh, having the right tools, having the right accessories to do that, um, you can really up your game. So I want to encourage everybody out there. Remember, the code is TAKEREASY at manscaped.com. It's this phrase Travis says at the end of every episode. T-A-K-E-R-E-A-S-Y, all one word. Manscaped.com, take your easy 20% off your entire order. You can get the Performance Package 4.0 that's got the lawnmower, the weed whacker, the boxers, uh, the travel case, which is awesome, the crop preserver lotions, crop reviver spray. It's got all that stuff. You can get the hedger, replacement blades, boxers that Travis loves. Right now, they have one, I don't know how much longer it's on, but it's purple and black, and it's Undertaker. Themed. It's, it's for testicular cancer, but it's purple. It's got purple uh, stuff on it. So yeah, if you're a real big Taker fan, that's the support to get. testicular cancer foundation and get the Undertaker. One. I so, love it, yeah. man. Unofficial Undertaker Manscaper. That's the unofficial product of the month, right there. Manscaped.com, twenty percent off code Taker Easy and the free shipping, which is clutch, right there. So check them out. Let's check this out. SmackDown season three, episode forty nine. Undertaker versus oh, Bradshaw. Favorite season of SmackDown. It's a good one. I, 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 <laughs> like, I like season seven, man. I like season seven. Good. Good. That's the one with the, the writer strike. I'm just That's kidding. the will there, day, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All that good stuff. Uh, anywho. All right, Travis, why don't you uh, all right. hit us up. Play, and then we'll all hit it on play. So, ready, everybody? Three, one, play. All right. Man, you talk about Ooh. manly men right there. These yeah, are two, two of them, dude. I can't dude, believe uh, Undertaker came to the ring wearing this shirt, by the way. So Undertaker was wearing this shirt. Uh, all right. And I do give mad respect for Bradshaw wrestling in jeans. Because the other day I, uh, I dropped the kid off at daycare and I went right into lifting weights. After I got home, I thought it'd be, well, who cares if I lift weights in jeans? Nobody's watching me. Man, it was like a tangled hammock within a half an hour. <laughs> it was bad news bears. <laughs> So I can't believe Bradshaw's doing this in jeans. <laughs> He's more yeah. manly than any of us are. That's, right, that's all right. I can say. 
Um, what do you think of Bradshaw's look here? The, I Ooh. mean, what, besides Ooh. the jeans, the uh, the the hair, the mustache, this era of Bradshaw. This I mean, is perhaps my favorite Bradshaw, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so too. Um, I remember just being so shocked when he became JBL. Um, really, a couple months he was still Bradshaw a little bit when he cut the hair off, had that dramatic. He was a major player on Raw, mm. like a main eventer on Raw for like months, and all of a sudden. It didn't work out, and he comes back, and yeah, like you were saying, go ahead. No, yeah, it's wild, it was shocking. Uh, yeah, these guys were uh, what? They're former opponents turned stable mates turned opponents again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, yeah, and, oh. huge part of to that 2004 era of Undertaker, uh, big rivalry with JBL. Uh, three, you think three pay per view matches against him? Yeah, it is crazy that all these fans are standing up for this match. That's wild. That's just how over everybody was at the time. Right, all the signs, everybody standing the whole time. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Yeah, as you mentioned, Randy, uh, Undertaker had turned heel on the Monday before this by uh, shoving Jim Ross's face into Vince McMahon's hiney. A classic (laughs) heel turn moment. Yeah, that's how I always turn heel at home. (laughs) Shove kids' faces into other people's hiney. That's it. (laughs) And uh, another friend of the Undertaker <laughs> is the referee here for this match. Teddy, Teddy Long. Long. Holla, holla, holla. One player. Count them down. They're both double down. Two player. Uh-oh, here he comes. Oh, man. Farouk's in the state. old Tommy Dreamer uh, merch stand t-shirt special. Merch stand t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. He lost oh, his APA shirt. Don't. Farouk's going to hijack oh, the motorcycle, man. and he looks like he has a little trouble doing it. Like, he got a tutorial about 10 <laughs> minutes before the show, you know? Maybe Hulk Hogan showed him how to do it. <laughs> two years later in this. That's bold oh. of Ron Simmons. Take her clothesline to the outside so he can see his bike being pulled away by Farouk slowly. He's got the Flintstone version. He's pedaling it with his feet. <laughs> right, he is. <laughs> You're right. Ron Simmons has never ridden a motorcycle. No. <laughs> I bet you put me on one. I've only ridden. I've never driven one. Oh, he's got these two big guys though, in this ring. A couple Blowing of hosses. Oh! Oh, he's going for the clothesline from hell, but he got a big, big boot. Head. And Goozle. And it, you quickly gets rid of him with a choke slam. No last ride today. Doesn't yeah. need to, I, I guess. He doesn't mess around. Good height from that choke slam, though, by yeah. Bradshaw. I got to give him that. But he's immediately out. He's got to go back and get his. Got to get the bike. Bike back. This kid stole my bike. No. Farouk disappeared. Farouk is gone. Yeah, he gone. He ain't sticking around. Now, I saw that uh, pre tape before. Oh, oh he, just left. he really is gone. <laughs> he just, <laughs> just drove it up stage. and left. It. I wasn't even stealing it. I just moved it <laughs> just to tick you off. Oh! Oh, RVD with a chair. You talk about a signature haircut. Here's a guy with one right here. Yeah. He still, he still, still has it. Yeah. <laughs> 2023. The, uh, the lines keep getting a little bit closer to the middle of his head as a, as he's aged, though. But I respect it. And they had, they're going to have a, a fantastic match at Vengeance in a few days. Fun little match. Oh, yeah. I think it made. I think it was maybe my twentieth or it, it, it my was. twenty or nineteen yeah. in my top twenty all time. I remember when DVDs were a big deal. I remember watching that pay per view in college with my friends, and I thought immediately, like, I'm buying this on DVD. Like the match was that good. I knew. Plus, he won a title, hardcore or otherwise. But I was like, I'm going to buy that. That was. Sure. I remember going to whatever Fye or or someplace uh, in the mall, and I was like, they had the vengeance dvd and vhs and like the vhs was a lot cheaper and i was like oh i don't know uh, i'll get the dvd i guess <laughs> i'll pay the extra ten dollars for the dvd and uh, i made the right choice i guess <laughs> all right that was fun uh the yeah. the uh, the haircut for the undertaker um a uh nice little uh squash not quite a squash but uh it really helps Undertaker get over there for that big match with rvd at, at the pay-per-view yeah. Um, let's talk about the shave right here. Well, what match is going to symbolize this? Yeah. So with the shave, that's right before, uh, WrestleMania 28, I think, uh, you know, a year prior to that at WrestleMania 27, I think both the you gentlemen were there. Were you not? They were. Absolutely. Undertaker defeated triple H, but he won the match, but he 
he didn't win the day. He went out on the on the right. gurney and almost did. And so I think Undertaker wanted to show that he could still hang with Triple H. Uh, and he wanted to challenge him to show that you, you know, I can't accept going out on a gurney like that. I even though I want, I want out of desperation. So Triple H refuses. Triple H says, no, I'm not going to put you out forever. I'm not, I'm just not going to do that and be responsible for that. So the undertaker starts to taunt him a little bit. And he talks about how he ended the HBK's career talks about how HBK was maybe better than triple H was anyway. And triple H still refuses. So the undertaker in a <laughs> classy vignette, uh, he goes mad. And when he goes mad, he ends up in a vignette where he takes a straight razor and he cuts his hair and I'm using air quotes for hair. Because yeah. We all know he was wearing that terrible wig by then. Um, he came out on Raw wearing a terrible wig first. But he does cut it with a straight razor just to show how mad he's going, that he needs this He needs this match with Triple H, and he does lop all of his hair off. But they don't show it. They don't show you the outcome. They want right. you to buy the PPV hey. if you want to see what's under that Palpatine hood. And so right. Right. you had to wait. But you did know that he cut his hair somewhat because you didn't see him cut the wig. So... This is where you come into WrestleMania 28 in Miami, where it's the end of an era. It's The Undertaker and Triple H one more time with Shawn Michaels, though, as the guest referee. Shawn, very involved with both men's careers, but he is Triple H's best friend. So you got to wonder, yeah. would he lean to one side or the other for this thing? So that that would be the shave when he comes out. And um, he comes out with a hood for maybe the first time ever. I don't remember him having the Palpatine hood before this. Um, I think you're right. And that, but then he he does he reveal. He didn't have the high neck thing. He didn't have the. Sure. Did he ever have the hood at the ministry? I mean, he had a cloak, uh, but yeah, but he, he never quite. did like a big entrance with it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. I think this is a bit the first time he ever had so, the, yeah. the Palpatine hood. Yeah. If yeah. we're wrong, they'll, they'll tell us in the comments. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, those vignettes. I mean, I mean, I remember them very vividly of him mm -hmm. in, uh, in his little, uh, you know, psycho uh, psycho ward room ward. with, with yeah. all the pictures of, of uh, Triple H on there and, and and cutting it with the straight razor. And I, I remember watching it going, "Who are they fooling with this wig? <laughs> what is right. going on here?" Um, but yeah, I, and uh, did he not? Did he wear the wig out uh, for that? showdown with triple h in the ring i think he, I think he did wear it once because i think that's where all of us universally yeah. were like what is happening what? with that wig yeah right. it was obvious right. <laughs> under the hood it was still obvious it reminded me of um alex you talked about i know you and i texted this week about that uh orton taker rivals episode which was yeah. a lot it was a lot of ripped off material you said from the um from the network right yeah, it was a lot of recycled uh, material, but I mean, still interesting. Still very good, yeah. yeah. And that, Taker in that in, in that program, Taker talks about how bad the makeup was on Bob Orton when they were trying to disguise him right. with a mustache and a new <laughs> face and nose. And he's like, "I'd like to think we would do a bit better with those effects if we were to do them today." I was thinking the same thing about his WrestleMania wig. Yeah, uh, for May twenty eight. Maybe they'd do a little better <laughs> job today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But uh, still, the wig uh, does not overshadow uh, what a great buildup this is. Uh, what a great story no. these guys have going into this match. I mean, it is, um, you know, you, you joined us for a bonus episode back in the day, Randy, covering the uh, two Shawn Michaels matches. We did alternate commentary yep. for both of those. That was your first uh, guest appearance on the show. And, I mean, this is the culmination of that, of years of this storyline uh, paying, playing out. I mean, you could go back to, you know, the Royal Rumbles with Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. I mean, you, you could really, you go all the way back to the DX days uh, and, you know, trace the arc of this storyline. But really, mainly, it's I mean, these four WrestleMania matches in a row that tell this incredible story and it culminates here in Hell in a Cell with all three guys involved. I was, uh, I was so nervous, by the way, for that episode. Like, I'm going to be on, this is the big leagues. This is Talking Taker. <laughs> Like, I'm not kidding, you guys. I unplugged my soda fridge because I'm like, I, that soda fridge can't go off in the middle of this. This is going to ruin the whole show. So I unplugged you, uh, have you not heard our dogs or uh, my washing machine in the back? Uh, maybe. <laughs> it's a little too much wife, respect. Her wife, his wife, yeah, we're good. I'm in a closet. <laughs> <with clothes Right. laughs> I've downgraded in my room since we've been doing this. I've lost my bonus room. <laughs> 
Well, uh, to, let's do this. This is a huge matchup here. What's the timestamp you've got? Huge. Randy? Yeah, so this is uh, uh, season 28, episode one, by the way, of WrestleMania. But this is uh, one hour, episode 10 minutes, 17 seconds. One ten seventeen, and that's straight to the bell. Gosh, I can't believe it's so early in the card. It was. One ten seventeen. That's bizarre. One ten seventeen. Ooh, was I did that too when I was, you know, I was preparing for this a week or two ago. Like I just scrolled to the end, figuring right. like that's going to be where it is. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is Rock and Cena. What's going on here? Yeah. You figured it'd be, yeah. Near wow, the end. That is yeah. wild. It's only uh, maybe like two, three matches before this. Oh, that's crazy. Right. Um, where were you watching WrestleMania 28, Randy? Pay-per-view, uh, pay-per-view. I was probably, let's see, this is 2012, so I'm still in Michigan. So I'm in Lansing, Michigan, watching on the uh, pay-per-view in my apartment in the uh, in the old bachelor pad. But All I right. did get WrestleMania because if your guy wrestles once a year, you got to order it. You got to pony up $50 and order it, especially when the streak was on the line. So I wasn't, uh, I remember not being overly worried about this um, match. I mean, I, I had a little bit because you never know in the WWF, brother. That's but, right. uh but I remember not being too worried about this. I think I tweeted watch along Tommy the other day. He was tweeting about that Orton Taker rivals episode. And I was, I was super worried about that WrestleMania um, more than any other WrestleMania. But for this one, I felt pretty comfortable with the streak, but there was, uh, there was a couple moments here that we'll talk about that were oh, yeah. uh, a little scary. <laughs> one of the great near falls uh, of the entire yes, yeah. streak right ever. here. Um, of any match ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Travis, I think this might've been like the first one in like, a long time that we did not watch uh together either in person yeah, either at the show it. or on pay-per-view together buddy our buddy chuck well he was there for part of it <laughs> but uh, yeah we were in nashville and uh yeah watch this with some buddies from church uh i made friends with up there so yep this was a big night i was so excited for the cm punk and jericho match and this match and uh not the main event though Twice in a lifetime. Twice in a lifetime. <laughs> Twice in a lifetime, baby. <laughs> Not Team Teddy versus Team Johnny either. Right. Oh, I was pumped for that. <laughs> okay, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Well, uh, let's do it, man. Uh, one hour, ten minutes, seventeen seconds. WrestleMania twenty-eight. Uh, you're looking at. Two of the greatest of all time to ever do it. They are having a stare down right in the middle of hell in a cell right here to kick this off. Uh, everybody queued up. Ready to go? Yeah. All right, dude. Count us down. All right. Is Randy frozen? Is he back? Uh-oh. Is he there? That's not good. Hold on. <laughs> We're not ready. Are you ready? Meow. Hey, girl. <laughs> Hey, back. Back. Oh, he, he made it. I don't know what happened. It just cut out. We'll and pretend that didn't happen. Yep. It's all good. You ready to count down and do it? Yes. All right. We'll go three, two, one, play. And three. One. Hey. <laughs> got it. John Michaels got his ringing the bell. Taker's backing up, doing the arm stretches. Look at that mighty, mighty cell. It's so big. Now, I remember that. Don't waste this is like the. Away. I remember the cell being so huge. I remember thinking, watching this, how are they going to do Hell in a Cell when there's no, uh, no, right. no roof on the on the stadium? Right. Off well. And if I'm not mistaken, is this the last WrestleMania with a Hell in a Cell until this year? Yes. Oh, it might be. It might be. Yeah. I think it is until Edge and Finn. So that's pretty cool. I enjoyed that match. What about y'all? It was a great match. I did. I know we were texting Alex about whether or not i thought surely this is a stunt to open the door but then they showed his head and i thought surely this is the real deal (laughs) yeah you couldn't even see the blood though because his face was red already so Uh, it's like with the demon but you can see it on the map yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. i uh i I was i think i texted both of y'all uh i i tuned in right when uh, Miz and Shane McMahon were doing their segment and Shane yeah. <laughs> blew his leg out of his leg. And then that happened with Finn. I was like, I- I've cursed WrestleMania. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I have terrible luck. But this match was Tan not cursed, of course. Sweet tan going. No, we, uh, we're talking about haircuts. Uh, all three of these guys, Taker got a head start here, but all three of these guys yeah. cut their long hair eventually, right? Yeah. Right. That was H- the end of an era. 
<laughs> yeah, Sean <laughs> Michaels cutting his hair is truly the end of it here. Uh, but man, uh, we, Australia bald was or crown, whatever it was, uh, Saudi, whatever that was the end of it here. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We uh we 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 jump started the match so here, uh, both the, uh, these guys working outside the cell, uh, two of the the greatest Hell in a Cell legends of all time probably yeah. right here, but yeah that moment where Undertaker pulls the cloak off and we see him with this you know the faux hawk, hawk. basically yeah. f- first time we've ever seen him quite like this. Uh, was that immediate reaction for you, Randy, watching this on pay per view? Yeah, I expected it to be. I thought he was just going to go back to what we had just seen in the haircut. Match. Right. I thought, okay, right. he'll have short hair again. It'll be the first time for the the dead man because you know when he was the mm-hmm. big evil, he didn't need to look like a demon or the grim oh. reaper because he's the big evil. So it'd be the first time for this incarnation. But I expected it to be short hair like mine. I was shocked when I saw the oh, UFC like yeah. mohawk type deal. I'm like, well, that yeah, fits because I know. Yeah, I know he's an MMA fan, so I thought, okay, that's cool. I enjoyed how when he took the hood off, it got its own thunderclap. Like the haircut got its own thunderclap. It needed that, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I I definitely, I don't think I liked it at first because it was so shocking. Too much. But uh, I remember as the years went on, as he as he kept it going for a few years, I really grew to like it because, like, I felt like it showed his age in a lot of ways. Mm. It's sort of like. Kind of, kind of looked, just looked like a crypt keeper. This this older monster and kind of made him scarier in a lot of ways. He's he's weathered, uh, but he's still uh, still this huge threat. He's still this monster that you can't overcome. You know, time maybe uh, weathering her way at him, but uh, he's still extremely scary. So uh, I grew to love it. It fits with your the story from your WrestleMania the previous year that he's not. The Undertaker isn't some impervious demon. He's actually just a guy that just yep. will not give up on WrestleMania Day. And that kind of fits that, right? He just ticked Sean off by pushing him out of the way. Yeah, I'd be careful if I was him. Uh, guest ref HBK cost him a world title once, so I'd be careful yeah. pushing Sean mm. Michaels around. <laughs> At least Sean is wearing pants and not those little tiny uh, cheerleader bloomers with a roll the, of coins in the front. The, oh, banana, the banana smuggling shorts, yeah. <laughs> look at his pants, they're like tapered leg and like he's got them tied off at the boot and they're like they're so they're still corny his wife wouldn't let him wear those shorts out right. <laughs> <laughs> thank god rebecca that's what <laughs> i'm gonna great. wear to SummerSlam this year i'm thinking uh please <laughs> good uh oh. this match was pretty big for us travis uh you uh i ranked it uh number eight all time uh for my undertaker uh all-time top 20, you ranked at number four in your all-time top 20. So pretty huge uh, in, in legacy for us uh, as far as or standing for us, I would say. Yeah, and I remember like my dilemma with that was initially I, I did like this match a lot. I preferred 27 because we were – I think because of the bias of us being there. Sure. Um, but then as we were doing Talking Taker and going back and just seeing the story and being such a sucker for story uh, – just yeah just in songs in movies whatever it is being such a, such a sucker for for storytelling i think the this you know, being the culmination of the four year story really it, it really grew on me it took a higher place and if you would have asked me you know a year after this match i would not have said it ranked it that high no cells the knee drop and yeah clotheslines triple h right there uh is it uh i'm sure it's top 20 for you randy is it does it crack the top 10 top 5 I'd probably say it was it's top ten. Yeah. I would probably say it's probably top ten, uh, just because it is the end of that entire storyline with Sean and and Triple H, and it is yeah. an end of an era, you know. And at first, you yeah. think Hell in a Cell at Mania, and you're like, Mania sells itself. It doesn't need a sell. I mean, that Boss Man Mania Hell in a Cell was completely <laughs> unnecessary, right? <laughs> completely unnecessary, but this served oh, a purpose. Nice. <laughs> It did, and uh, I, I really feel like as uh, Taker's going for old school here, and he does hit it. You always say on uh, with Steven, uh, Randy, uh, you never thought Undertaker hit the old school, but there he does. It's, it's, a, it's a good reason to relive these matches. Like like Travis was saying, his opinion changed on WrestleMania 28. I swear, as a kid growing up, he never hit the old school. It was he was like over. He <laughs> and like now we we watch it with Steven and I and collect up dead, you know doing our gimmick match along, watch alongs and he hits it every single time. I don't know what I was thinking. So it's he nice. To more than he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I think he missed it more in like the last than he ever did. Like sure, guys sure. will pull him off or whatever. 
I think Punk pulled him off twice in that Mania match, didn't he? Twenty nine. Yeah, at least once, yeah. Yeah. I, definitely once. Um, but this uh yeah, this match just a culmination of that story between these four guys these three guys. And even going back to Flair, he, where Sean retired Flair and it just I think it's a, it's a, it's just a great story. Um the match just happens to be the icing on the cake that it's so good, but the story is perfect. And then just the way that Sean is gonna be, you know, conflicted here and ah, it's just oh it's getting me wound up just thinking about it. I love it. <laughs> love it. I, I feel like it's gotten better with time too. Like I, yeah, I feel like I, I really liked it when it first aired, but man, I just, I loved it watching it back. Uh, and as time has gone on, I'm going to appreciate the, the story as a whole. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's uh, a match that has continued to uh, get better with time. Yeah. Just one of those things that gets sweeter with time. Mm. Dust in the bottle, baby. Mm. Good stuff. Here we go. Apron leg drop. Hardest part of the yeah. ring. Right. <clears throat> yeah. He had the, uh, Ooh, the next year and the year after that, he had the Mohawk with uh, Punk and with Brock, I believe, right? Yeah, with Brock, he uh, I'll go through it after we're, we go through some of his looks here. With Brock, he had the Mohawk with the, like the, uh, That's right. the devil chin thing. Yeah. Yeah, chin bunny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Didn't care for that look as much. No. Oh, or, snap. Or the red coat that he wore that day. I didn't understand. Well, of course, it's all tainted with what happened that day, but right. uh, the Everything red coat wasn't that. into that either. Yeah. No, no, no. I have not wa- rewatched that match, and I don't know what would make me rewatch this match. <laughs> you guys will have to put me up to it, you know? <laughs> we may do we may it to... next year for the uh, 10 year anniversary. I don't know. Oh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But, uh,. There's... JR on commentary here, another great yeah, touch, uh, see, important touch. Exactly. There's just so many little things that make this match just I, – I, I didn't appreciate it as much in the time uh, as I watched it, and then, like, I do more now. I'll be so bold to say the Star Wars prequels are like that. <laughs> I like them at the time. I love them now. Opening up a can of worms. That's fine. <laughs> I, I am an episode one guy. I saw bits and pieces of the classic ones as a kid, but I didn't put it all together until episode one was coming out. So I watched the old ones. I'm a senior in high school. We go watch episode one. I love Star Wars Racer on N64. Like, oh, it's yeah, a jam. Dude. Without question. So, yeah. yeah, I love episode one. Yes, me too. I, I enjoyed watching it in the theater. I, I'm, I mean, I'm not a huge Star Wars guy just in general, but, uh, man, as a... How old were we? 12, 10, 11, 12 years old? Thir- uh, we were 13 when. 13. Came okay. Out. Man, 99. Yeah. It was the best movie ever. <laughs> so it's awesome. I, I haven't like rewatched it a ton as an adult, but uh, man, I, I Mesa can't still say I didn't love this kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, what's happening here, Joe? <laughs> Baker has reversed me. Yeah, he's reversed a pedigree attempt onto the steel stairs into the biggest back body drop. And now now Taker's oh. just gotten double A spine busted right on the steel steps. Nasty and spot that's... right there. He did that last year at 27. Um, and he did it, ran up the stairs, picked him up and did it through the table, right? If I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So that was a big spot. And here we go, oh, going for Hell's Gate on the on stairs. On the stairs. Could get added pressure, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> It just looks cool. It just I don't know cool. mechanically what it does, but That's it looks right. cool. That's right. Um, man, it's but it, bugging out, dude. Every move, oh. every piece of action really matters here. Uh, there's no yes. wasted yes. motion, no wasted movement. And uh, I, I said this when we originally called it. Uh, I, I feel like this is the most Triple H match of all time. Just like the monologuing and the... Uh, big moments, the big acting in between each moves. And yeah, you know, sometimes that can get really old if it's not really earned and like you know, just the shock after every two count or whatever. But with these guys, it's, it's earned. It's, it's, earned, it's yeah. deserved and they put it off. Yeah. I can yeah, never, no, I, figure, agree. I can never figure out what busts open triple H here. I think he's a little busted and I can never figure out what it is, but somehow, some way he's busted he open. Hard way. It's yeah. that hell's gate on the, Stairs, on the dude. stairs, right? Come yeah. on, it's that's vicious. a blood <laughs> Don't you know? Yeah. But it was interesting. Triple H did the old uh, Rampage Jackson power bomb out of the out of the ah. triangle. That was pretty cool. So going back to the MMA. 
Triple H got a little bit of a Ahmed Johnson tights problem there in, in, the, hey, in the back. I don't this know if week in the said. cheap. Are we bringing this week in the cheap? Back? <laughs> I think we have to for, for the game me. right here. <laughs> Sean's not wanting shrunk in the happen. wash a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I, it is interesting. It was all I, I, in this era. I always thought like Hell in a Cell is tough when you can't do blood. Uh, and they said like, how can you really pull off a Hell in the Cell? And a lot of times they didn't. But uh, these right. guys were able to. They were able to bring the intensity and the violence to it without, you know, a little bit of blood from Triple H hard way, but, yeah. um, you know, not the dramatic blood that we're used to. Sure. Well, and it says something here, too, in that at this point, Hell in a Cell had been a pay-per-view for three years. Maybe 2009 was the first year, I think. So we've already gotten to that point where it's watered down. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a blow-off to a feud. It's just a spot on a calendar. This is a blow-off to a decades long feud. So that's really cool that Vince was so cool enough to be able to say, yeah, these two guys, three guys really deserve this spot of mania in a cell rather than saving it for October just because it's October, you know? So, yeah. and, and then I know triple H nowadays has gotten rid of that pay-per-view, but, um, and, and edge and Finn earned it at, at Rip mania a few weeks ago. Those are some wicked chair shots. And my friends, my friends and I were talking during the edge and Finn mats, like, you're 30 some odd hell in a cells in. How do you innovate? You know what I mean? That must be a heck of a challenge, but they did a pretty good job on uh, the other Sunday. <laughs> yeah. You they... just break their head open with the ladder. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You, you paint the weapons purple and, and red, you know? That's, right. like, that's how you innovate. <laughs> I liked that uh, the kendo stick jail that Edge had him in. I thought that that was pretty innovative. I like that. That was a nice spot. I like that. Yeah. Sean's telling Triple H to just cover him. Yeah. End it. And man, uh, no chair shots to the head, but man, you were saying it, Travis. Those chair shots to the back were maybe worse than some ones to the head. Yeah. And you can see the oh. welts coming up on Undertaker's back. That's now a shoot. Triple H. Yeah, Triple H has now thrown He's Sean to the side, it. saying, yeah. in this match, or I will end him. Golly. Yeah, trying to pull a uh, what what would be what would happen I guess in 2019 when the Hell in a Cell stops uh, because the ref stops it. Oh my God. <laughs> we hadn't had that yet here in 2012. It made me so mad. <laughs> Taker is adamant. Do not stop. Do not stop. And we're really seeing back to last year. Yep. 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 You see that vulnerability from him. And and I think that the haircut adds to that. We, uh, we associate that long hair with the undertaker so much. The fact that he's cut it off, it it shows (sighs) maybe some weakness, maybe some vulnerability to him. That He's not the man, uh, not the demon that we thought him to be. So I think that really plays into the whole story here. And Triple H is not even trying to beat him with a wrestling move. He's just beating him and then going to pin him, you know? He's not, like, going to wrestle him down. He doesn't care who's the better wrestler. This is It doesn't matter, no. Who's going to end who, yeah. I do miss Triple H's long hair. He looked great with long hair. That was another shocker too uh, when he when he oh, uh, yeah. finally cut everything off. And I think he did it voluntarily, right? If you look mm-hmm. at his hairline, it doesn't look that bad. No, he just was wearing that suit so much more. I heard my interview saying like I just I'm wearing a suit, so it just fits better with the you know the seat the whatever executive type role, right? None of them did it in a hair versus hair match. What a shame. Right. Let's get the payoff. Wasted opportunity. Have there been any in WWE, like real big, high profile? Ones? Not in WCW a WCW would, would do them because of luchadors and stuff, but hair versus mask or something. But Well, we saw Dream one here in Mania 20. Uh, the Victoria and Molly Holly. Molly Holly. That's true. Ray Mysterio said this week he has pitched uh, uh, Ray versus yeah. Dom for mask <clears throat> versus hair. Ooh, he has Ooh, I like yeah. that. Let's do it. Cut that mullet off. Triple H has you brought out get... Mr. Sledge from under the ring. He's gonna he's gonna hit the Undertaker unless Sledge. HBK calls for the uh, bell. Of course, we famously Mom. had uh, Kurt Angle and Edge. That's how yes. we got uh, bald Kurt Angle. I guess we have had some hair matches. A couple, yeah. but uh, not in years. Not, not in years. yeah. Long time. Oh, sledgehammer to the chin. Oh. Could be the ball right. game here. One. You would think. Two. One. No. Two. Oh. If this were a shoot, then I'll do it right there. <laughs> Being a jaw with a sledge, I'm out for a weekend. Jim right, Ross like, is losing his mind. What do yeah. you have to do to beat this guy? Hit him with a car? Where's Rikishi? Like, get him out here. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the hay truck out. Uh, park it right, right next to the ring. 
That would really be the end of an era. Bring it all together. <laughs> Back 12 years. Uh, oh, he's about to crush his skull. <laughs> he's going to try to gourd bust him and Sean intervenes. Oh, Shawn my intervenes. God. <laughs> Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> Gallagher. Gallagher <for> <laughs> Blow his brains out. I would have killed the crowd right people. There. <laughs> yeah. You got to give it Sean up to Sean here. Uh, yeah. He is really the MVP of this match. Um, I think I said on the last episode, Shawn Michaels, I don't know if I'd want to see him in like a Martin Scorsese film or anything, but as far as acting with inside the squared circle, Wrestling. there is mm-hmm. nobody better that can pull nobody. off that kind of acting. Nobody. Even when he wasn't of sound mind and body all the yeah, time. Even yeah. back in the day, he was pretty darn good at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. And okay. Two best wrestlers that are guest referees. Who are they? I mean, one Shawn Michaels, right? I don't know. Who's the other one? Oh, the other one, you know, who it is. Don't go Steve Austin. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> We've said that so many times. He's so good at special refereeing. He He's hates so it. Good. He always used to say that on his podcast. So he hated being a referee. He's so, Oh, take his guy Sean in it. Taker's got the Hills Gate on Sean. I, I'm guessing to make sure he doesn't call for the bell. Exactly. That's right. See, it's great nuanced. psychology. Story. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. You can't DQ him until seven years later. No- so, <laughs> yeah, why not take the ref out, do what you want, and then all he's there to do is call the pin. That's it. But I tell you what, when you put those pinstripes on, you do have a little bit of weakness. Because it happens. Something you know, about referees it, get that. Those, those things are just laced with quaaludes or something, man. I don't know what it is. Right, he's made out of plaster of Paris and can't get up for an hour all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. I've been out of the ring for a couple of years. That dirt nap that Mike Kyoto took at WrestleMania 17 was like oh 35, my God. 35 minutes. He, he seriously <laughs> suffered some brain damage or something from being unconscious for that long. I should have checked on him way sooner. <laughs> But now Taker has frogged himself because he put triple. Uh, he put HBK out on the in the Hell's Gate, and now yeah. there's nobody there to accept the submission or the nope. tap out because he's got Triple H in it. He would have had him right here. Would have had him. Great touch from but, Triple H though, like struggling to get that sledgehammer though. Uh, that's a good little good movement call from back him. To last year, yeah, mm-hmm. blindly searching for it. Yeah. Oh, it's nuance from last year carrying over. It's so good. There he is, passing out. He's gone. And- Taker's Sean back does. It. Taker's back does look it. like a paint by numbers. As you guys are right. Oof. 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 Oh, he's out. He is just calling an ambulance. There's three dead guys. All three ring. guys are One out. One of them's a gimmick. <laughs> oh, here comes little Nate to save the day. If they can unlock the door. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've uh, we saw Timmy White going to the Hall of Fame this year. Do we think uh, Little Nate's going to go into the Hall of Fame one day? Oh, without question, I hope sure. So. Kyoto, Little Nate, yeah. Kyoto's got to go if he's awake for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, choke slam. He choke slam. No, that's Undertaker defeats Triple H in a Hell in a Cell with a choke slam. No, nah, that ain't gonna be. No. It was a wedgie choke slam though. He pulled his pants. It was up. this week <laughs> in the Chiefs. Yeah. Little Nate countered it. Uh, I really liked the line in uh, JBL and Farouk's introduction, induction of uh, Tim White into the Hall of Fame. They were talking about how they used to hang out at Timmy White's bar, the Friendly Tap, and JBL said, "Yeah, we spent a uh, Swiss, we spent a great month one afternoon at the Friendly Tap." Oh, <laughs> 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 <Bought> <laughs> uh, so good! Take just choke slam little Nate's, by the way, for those of you who aren't yeah. watching. Yeah, he did. He's resting on the bottom rope. Being a Hall of Fame. That'll be Conan enough for little Nate today. Conan for Hall of Fame just for the speech he gave. <laughs> he did a great job. He just great for the job. speech he gave, put him in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely, he was incredible, incredible. Oh, here we go. I love Conan. Tombstone, Bang. nope. Oh. Tombstone City, nope. Oh! Wheat chin the into the pedigree. There it is. And I jumped jumped out of my seat right here. One, two, no. False finish. Everybody. I don't know about you guys, but I had some skid That's markage it. going on. I severely <laughs> did. <laughs> Sean can't believe it. Yeah, uh, collapses there into the corner. Sean is crying. I mean, I jumped. 
higher than I had in years. I think that, everyone I in was... the WWE universe did. Uh, you, yeah. you just, oh, I was pretty confident going in, but when they did that, I thought, oh no, yeah. oh no. <laughs> he's taking all these chair shots. He's taking uh, Sledge to the chin, and now, boom, sweet chin music. Boom, pedigree. That's got to be it. I was scared. But I was like, end of an era, it's okay to end it then. Triple H probably can keep wrestling, Taker's done, maybe, I don't know. So, huh, they had me, man. And they you thought me. like, oh, Triple H, he's got he's got enough ego that he's he wants to be the one to end right. Taker's <laughs> streak. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's going to fulfill all those internet rumors and prophecies about, you know, this huge ego he has. That's what I thought in that moment. Like, no, 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 no. But, yeah, amazingly. Uh, perfectly crafted timing for that kick out and that near fall right there. Just this wherewithal of this guy to never lose at WrestleMania, you know? Yeah. Oh, Sean's been thrown to the outside. Oh, Sean. (sighs) There's so many false finishes in match. Oh, he sits up and Triple H falls down. Slips on banana peel. (laughs) Oh, this ain't WrestleMania 27 anymore. Oh, going at it. Blowing the comeback. Here we go. Boom, boom. Eating the soup bones. Is he uh, he, he tinkering up? Can we call it tinkering up? I think yeah, we can call is. it that. <laughs> and boom, close on the corner. Gonna go. For... He's trying to get that special meter all filled up here. Yeah, right. Oh, snake, snake eyes, eyes big blue. He's playing all the greatest hits. He's doing it, doing it, and doing it. Yeah, Mammy. Gonna go up. Top Look at him move, oh, man. Kidding. Think you a like regular drops? leg drop? You don't see that often. It wasn't on the apron. It was no. a regular leg drop. Yeah. Same page out of Hogan's book. That's right. His favorite wrestler. Tombstone City. <laughs> Tombstone, number Dude. one. Everybody's on their feet. Sean's back just in time. One. Oh, two. Oh, yeah. I got, oh. I've got the audio turned up a little bit in my headphones. I mean, the, the roars from this crowd yeah. is unreal, man. That bug eyed reaction right there was earned, too. These guys earn these near falls, earn these shock reactions. There's too many guys that are like, no offense, but just no namers or guys that now it's like, oh, or like they'll have a big spot like that and they'll they'll hit him with a move they've never beaten him with, and then they'll kick out and they're like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm like, dude, you never won a match with that move. So right. don't this, act shocked. You kicked out of the zigzag? Oh my god, yeah, unbelievable! <laughs> that is how he won the title though. After this WrestleMania, right? <laughs> the next night, uh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, he won it with the zigzag, but yeah, after he'd been beaten. But yeah, you're right. Nowadays, like, okay, with super kick? Oh, no. Who doesn't? <laughs> oh, that was a big near fall. Oh, Triple H. What a oh, great camera man. shot there with yeah, Sean yeah. in the corner just praying, praying, talking to himself. See, it's beautiful. It's cinema, man. It's so good. So good. Just, just uh, center of the ring, just – Sharon strikes. This is how we started the match. You know, 30 minutes later, yeah. we're in the same spot. <laughs> That's right. Just about three feet lower on their knees. <laughs> right, right. On their yeah. knees. Just exhausted. Tired. Yep. Yeah. They've given everything to put the other man down. Uh, nature's still dead. Little nature's still dead. Just for an update. <laughs> serious brain damage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's sliding out. And this is not a wrestling match. This is a fight. These guys are just closed fist punching yeah. each other in the face right now. And I know you guys talk about it all the time. They didn't start with a collar and elbow tie-up. They no. went right into left and rights yeah. and haymakers, yeah. Like an Austin match used to. He wanted to get in there and just get at it. Uh-oh. If you're, if yeah. you're Dean Malenko and Chris Jericho, yeah, sure. Collar and elbow tie-up. If you're these two guys, no. <laughs> Pedigree number two. I could go for a Dean Malenko, oh. Chris Jericho, Hell in a Cell. <laughs> right now? <laughs> Blood and guts? <laughs> Maybe not right now. Hey, Malenko is at Hall of Fame. Conversationally, there. conversationally, Dean Malenko has the littlest nips I've ever seen on a man, ever. <laughs> Google it, everybody. Everybody Google it. Hashtag Malenko nips. Little nips. The little tiniest nips, nips, nips I've seen on a grown man, ever. <laughs> I don't think I've right. noticed it. You know what? I've probably seen, we've probably seen more nipples in our life than just because we watch wrestling. Right. <laughs> All the guys. Oh, like, our male nipples. <laughs> Isn't people it always – most people do. Does it not bother you? Like like Undertaker's outfit, like if his nipple started hanging out of his outfit, doesn't oh, that like freak you out? Yeah. Even though like Triple H's in there yeah. fully exposed, right. something about <laughs> if, if it's supposed to be covered and it comes out. I, mm. 
Disgusting. When Vader's left peck would inevitably come out every <laughs> yeah. match, I felt like I was seeing something I wasn't supposed to be yeah, seeing. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Who <did> he? Yeah. <laughs> what if he had little handprints like <laughs> like Sable? <laughs> yeah. Especially now, like when Strowman he's got the nipple rings, the bars to his Ooh. nipples, and then if he has the uh right. the, sure. th- the straps up and they come out and expose, I'm like, whoa! <laughs> I forgot Pain. about those. Yeah. But now he doesn't really wear the straps anymore. So. Oh, these guys are giving it all they've got. Triple Sean's H has got the hammer. Him. But then Taker steps on the hammer saying, not today, uh, son. This is not yeah. WrestleMania 27. Stop. So Give well done, man. Gives him the head shake. Another cinematic Boom. shot right there. Yes. We're doing some chair shots, and now it's Triple H getting worn out by a chair. Payback. Chair to the neck. Full circle to earlier in the match. Yes, John can't watch. John's had some of his most brutal matches against both these two guys. Oh yeah, that's what that's what makes this whole thing so picture perfect is uh, the history between everybody. Yep. What's your favorite Sean Triple H match, fellas? Oh, gotta be um, SummerSlam 02, right? When Sean comes back, and you don't even know if Sean can do this anymore. By the way, he wrestled that match in jeans. How did he do that? Yeah. <laughs> Without getting a tangled and hat cowboy boots. Just- yeah, but, I mean, that match was amazing, for especially not knowing if this guy is going to be able to do this. And then he did it for eight more years. It's crazy. That one's definitely probably my favorite. Uh, I, I remember they had a match on Raw, like, late 2003. It might have been, like, Chris, December. New Year's Eve 2003 or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't know. Like a 30-minute yep. match, and you think Sean's about to win the title back from yep. Triple H. And uh Eric Bischoff runs in and, and he, he has to be the referee for a minute there at the end. Really fun match. Those are my two favorite ones. Those are the two I'd hope you guys would say. Mm, so. Nice. Hell in a Cell with them, a little disappointing, I remember. With the Dutch boy haircut and the brown pants that everybody talks about. Well, that was Elimination sure. Chamber. But, uh, yeah. Well, that was Elimination Chamber at Survivor Series, you're right. Yeah, yeah with Sean had a Hell in a Cell with his, or Triple H had a Hell in a Cell with him and with, um, with Randy and with Nash, like Nash, his boy. They were never that Batista. great. They were never that great. Batista one was all right. That one yeah. was okay. But yeah, the Sean one, he they tried too much. He tried too hard. Yeah, I think it was it like an hour, almost an hour natural. long. Yeah, it was too long. Taker is now the one telling Triple H, stay down. Mm-hmm. So as, yeah, as you see, said, the rules just, reversed. The parallelism there, it's just so good. It's like watching a movie, man. It's like the first act, second act, third act. It's all, it's so good. You know, we had what's his name break down this whole story like uh, Saint uh, Ridley been years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, Doctor, Doctor, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was fantastic. Really, With Triple okay. H, just... he won't give up. Nope. still trying to get to his feet. He because won't surrender. Because psychology wise, he knows. Even though he lost last year, he he beat Taker. Taker couldn't right. stand up. So, like, he knows he can do it. His heart's still That's in it, thing. but his body's not yeah. there. Taker says no. No, sir. Not today. <sighs> One Get last act of defiance. Oh! And Triple H knows he's going down. Yep. He knows I'm about to be put down. So, might as well. Might as well. That's what I got. Give him the crotch chop and go down in a blaze of glory. Yeah. Oh, sledgehammer oh, to the chin. I love it. I love it. And Sean will not look. Sean's looking at the opposite corner. <laughs> Beautiful. Everybody knows. They just nail it. Crowd's Everybody about, nails crowd's their roles. To, crowd's about to roar at this. So good. Sean can't believe it. His head's down. He looked up at the heavens like, oh my. Oh, what is happening? Here come the straps. Speaking of nips. <laughs> on the straps this is okay this is intentional yes very jerry lawler here yeah <laughs> oh we've been a king taker he won king of the ring Ooh, yeah he only competed oh. in one and lost that to uh oh, king gosh. mabel don't remind me dude <laughs> tombstone like, number two skadoosh is that going to do it right here? There's two tombstones enough. John's like, I'm about to fast count this. I need to be over. <laughs> Just not gonna end he doesn't know. Two. Got him. Very, oh. 20 and 0. Yeah. Hand you the Oscar. Give him the Oscar. 
it, when he when he went to ten and zero, I was there for Ric Flair. I remember it was so sweaty in the Sky Dome. Like I pumped my fist and I had a friendship bracelet on, and it like flew off my hand. <laughs> ten rows. I never got it back, but I remember thinking, <laughs> "We'll never. They'll never break the streak at ten, and they'll never break the streak at twenty and zero. I remember being so sure at twenty and zero, we're good, and uh, we weren't. Nope. Well. I naively thought this was it. Like, I thought, okay, end of an era. They're advertising it this way. They brought JR out. These Both of these guys are retiring. This is their yeah. swan song. They're, they're, especially once they, they walk to the top of the aisle and have their curtain yeah. call right there. I legitimately believed this was the end for all of these guys. And uh, yep. when Taker came Me back too. next year, I was a little, little upset like at the false advertising of it. Um, of course, you know, has, has a great match with CM Punk and, you know, makes sure. up for it. But I, I naively thought this was the end of an era, even though they were, this was a year after once in a lifetime or whatever. <laughs> I say this is uh this is, yeah, it's a good point. This is bait and switch mania. Cause we got twice in a lifetime along with end of an era <laughs> on the same card here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it could have been a fitting ending. I mean, I'm glad it's not. Sure. So many sure, great sure. Taker matches still to come after this. Still had a lot of good ones left in him, but uh, really thought it was. I did feel a little cheated in this match. No corner last ride spot in a Triple H <sighs> match. With, Triple H match with no ten punch into the last ride. That's a good point. Signature yeah. moment. I think that was the first time he ever did that, and uh, used it in mm-hmm. many other 17. matches from that point. But uh, yeah. And I did see a sign in the crowd that said uh, Undertaker 20 and 0 equals Mr. WrestleMania. And I want to say thank you to that guy because the whole Mr. WrestleMania thing, put there, see, there's the sign right there. See, the whole Mr. Mm-hmm. WrestleMania thing calling Sean Mr. WrestleMania, dynamic performer. That hit a raw nerve with me every time because this man, <laughs> 25 wins at WrestleMania. He's Mr. WrestleMania. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Sean had some, I mean, he always stole a show, but uh, Absolutely. yeah. His his WrestleMania record does not match up there. Well, I think he's got a losing record. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> he probably does. I think he does. Yeah, and I'm look. A second, but but just look at all those signs, dude. Uh, you, yeah, the majority of the signs in the crowd tonight are for Undertaker, and for yeah. this match. And uh, that was always a fun thing to look at during the streak. Uh, sure, people always brought some awesome signs for WrestleMania. Really cool. People would do, people would do twenty and 0, 19 and oh, and then yeah. WWE was like, maybe we should put that on the old uh, Titan Tron there after the match. You yeah. know, <laughs> I love it. Were you a sign guy ever, Randy? Oh, you guys know I was. I went to the uh, so I went to No Way Out two thousand two, and I took my slap me Steph sign. I do remember that. Yes, I right. made Stephanie McMahon crush. Uh, <laughs> but I took slap me Steph, and then in high school, I famously we went to uh, Attitude Era raw in detroit with the zamboni steve austin and the zamboni oh you're yeah. at the... and i took I, uh my friends and i held up a i'd rather be in china sign uh so <laughs> that was our sign that night classic <laughs> so, Glad to be. And i was classic. absolutely a sign guy for sure look at all this pyro dude in that the whole night except for the main event the taker he's special dude how he's do special. you follow this dude this what was a, like, this? like we've talked about. This is a title match onto its own. Like after this, when the streak became a thing, he didn't need a belt because this was a title match every year. This yep. is uh, Team Johnny and Team Teddy does follow this. Oh, and wonderful. immediately before that is Heath Slater getting punched out by Pitbull. Nope. <laughs> no, Flow Rider. Flow Rider. Whatever. <laughs> Guys that WWE uses and nobody cares about. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And The weekend. You can add him to that list. Oh, yeah, can't even spell his name right. No. <laughs> oh man, Just illiterate children across the world because of weekend. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, Spotify. Well, Randy, you uh, you mentioned you, you wanted to talk about the Undertaker's uh, follicle Two evolution minutes. throughout the years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Why don't you start talking about that? Bring that up. Let's for us. let's obsess through his hair for maybe two minutes if we go through it. So we first start off with he debuts in 1990 with a mullet. He's got the mullet going, the red hair mullet with the five o'clock shadow. 90 to probably what 93, I'd say, and then mm-hmm. 1993 starts growing that mullet out to be maybe shoulder length hair. It's still red. He's not really doing the black thing yeah. yet. He's got uh, shoulder length red hair, and now he's got the uh, 
five o'clock shadow for like the whole beard, but it's just like this kind of Razor Ramon's stubble, you know? Yeah. yeah at first and, he had just sort of the chin strap going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the now probably about 95, he starts doing the black hair. I think he wants to like, oh, I should look like the Grim Reaper. I should dye my long hair black. I should have just a goatee, no more five o'clock shadow. And that should also be black. So he's looking like the Reaper from 95 to really maybe 99. Although there are some times, 97, 98, do you guys remember he had the goatee and he would like shave this part Mm -hmm. on the goatee. He had like late 97. I went to that house show the night before the Montreal screw job in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Famously. I saw saw Brett and Owen and Jim Neidhart face mankind and Taker and Steve Austin and Taker had the shave. He had the goatee, but he had like this part shaved and it looked so wacky. Um, what so a yeah, big thing back then, though, because like I mean, a lot of guys were doing that. It was like it was like this style, and it was kind of weird. I mean, just in life, not necessarily wrestling, but like in life, it looked like a fork. Yeah, I don't know yeah, how to do it. My but... brother did that. But then, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> so, but otherwise, he did have like the long jet black hair and the goatee, and um, and he did that until really the late '98 when it was Ministry of Darkness time, and he so then he did the jet black hair still, but he did the Amish devil as mm. I call it with mm. the. Uh, just the chin part of the goatee only. And it was like very long and pointy, like Satan almost. Uh, so and it worked. It, it was a great change. Uh, yeah. It looked very demonic, very evil. And uh, it was such a big shift for that Undertaker character. I think it was important. And, it, and it, like I mentioned earlier, it is something that uh, Mark Calloway always paid attention to. He was constantly changing up his gear constantly paying attention to his look and he knew that uh, i know chris jericho has talked about that a lot like yep. anytime you come back anytime you make a change in your character you ought to be changing your gear you ought to be changing your look up um it's a just it really helps cement that change in people's minds like uh it doesn't doesn't have that same effect uh if you could change your character but if you don't change your look up um it doesn't kind of have that same impact yeah, you want to change it up for merchandise and toys, and also you want to change it up just because you want to change it up when you think it's stale before everybody else thinks mm, it's stale. Exactly. So he was always not afraid to do that, not afraid to put himself out there and go outside of the what everybody knows him as. So he did that for the uh, the ministry right on time. He comes back from his injury, American badass. He comes back, and he's he's the motorcycle guy, right? So he's completely changed his totally look. Changed. Yeah, um, totally. Still got the long hair, but now it's red again. Still got the um, the goatee, but it's red again. And that really, he kind of holds on to that until until the SmackDown that we just watched for the haircut, where he just decides, I'm I'm the big evil. I don't need to look like the Reaper anymore. So he gets mm-hmm. his hair cut short, kind of like mine. It's not bald or anything, but uh, and a little he's bit got darker. The, right, a little darker. <laughs> yeah, I started going gray in like college, by the way. So <laughs> as long as it's still there, I'm happy. But um, right. But he, uh, like Taylor Hicks from American Idol, he's like 25 in gray hair, <laughs> yeah. right? The other guy from Catfish, not the main guy, but the yeah. other guy has like silver hair for no reason, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, smart Mark Sterling, I'm in that club, yeah. I guess. There you club. Go. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, so he got that haircut, and then, um, and that really is he started letting that go in like late 2003. I don't know if you guys remember. He, he his hair started getting he started letting it go we all knew what was coming so like mm-hmm. it started to kind of loop over and grow over his bandana and we all knew like oh he's growing his hair out a little bit here yep. mm-hmm. and then he gets buried by mr mcmahon at, uh in november of 03 and he comes back at uh, wrestlemania 20 and it's not quite it's not quite there <laughs> right but i mean what was it like sh- i don't know chin length shoulder length mm-hmm. i don't know yeah very it's soccer close mom. enough you know. yeah you, you get the point it, at that point we got the point yeah it, it fit um and he's, he still has the goatee going but it's all black again when he comes back as the as the og dead man and that is pretty much the only change until survivor series 05 when he yes. breaks, full beard my breaks favorite out of that casket and he's got that full beard for like i don't four five six weeks like just out of nowhere i think it's he did up yeah he did um armageddon that armageddon match with orton with the beard and I was, it's so funny. I was going to look that up and I was like, I need to look that up before our show. And then like that rivals episode covered it. And I was like, thank you rivals for doing my work for me. Um, a very underrated look. I, I dug the, that's my beard. favorite. Yeah. I don't know why he quit it so fast. Like by rumble Oh six, I think it's gone. Yeah, so like, gone. He, he's here and gone just like that. Hmm. But, uh, cause by 2006, he's back to the long hair and the goatee, just the goatee, not the beard. 
And that's pretty much the look that he carries into this match that we just watched, mm-hmm. which is WrestleMania 28 when he right. goes for the MMA faux hawk. <laughs> faux hawk thing. And then um, I think the uh, 2014, he has the mohawk, but he adds the chin beard again for the Brock yeah. Lesnar match. And then by 2015 with Bray Wyatt, he's got like big evil hair again. He's got short mm-hmm. hair, but it's not a cue ball anymore. We're back to yeah. like what he was in that SmackDown, that first match that he had. I think that is then, the, uh, the under Frazier match, basically. So. <laughs> <An under Frazier. laughs> that's yeah. And that's it. By 2016, he's back to the taker that we're kind of used to, which is that long hair and the, and the goatee. Although, as we know, as the, the lot, like he shaves the sides sometimes. I don't know what he's mm-hmm. doing there. Like just kind of shaving that. But. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, he like you said, he's somebody who always paid attention to that. He wasn't afraid to make changes. I mean, do uh, do you guys have a favorite? You, Travis, you mentioned the beard. Uh, you really appreciated that, Randy. That look with that hair and that beard, that full beard. I wanted so much more of that. I did too. I wanted it so it. much. Yeah. It's so good. But yeah, that, that's my favorite look, period, um, of his ever. Yeah, I would I would say like 1995 Taker, where he's he's not only doing the the dark goatee and the jet black hair that's long like the reaper, but he's doing like the pale makeup too. Like he wants Mm -hmm. to look like he's dead. Like, uh, so that's probably my favorite taker, that classic taker, but I agree that beard thing that there's definitely more meat on the bone for that. Like I would have loved to see that for a whole year. He did it for about six weeks. Yeah. I think, yeah, like 93, 94, 95. I'm definitely, that's my biggest nostalgia, but I got to give some love to the big evil uh, era to when he made that haircut and made that change. I mean, I think it's so iconic of a look and it really helped set that character apart, mm-hmm. apart. Uh, make it feel different, uh, make that change feel important that he made that haircut and, you know, he wins the title again during that reign. He has so many iconic moments there. Um, I kind of, I got to give some love to that era as well. Also as the carabiner. So there you know. That and uh, Jerry Lawler st- started calling him Booger Red during that uh, haircut phase. <laughs> Where would we be if we didn't have Where that? Where would we be without that? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I got to ask you guys uh, here as we wind this down and talk about haircuts and looks. What is uh, what is everybody's biggest uh, haircut slash uh, grooming facial hair regret uh, in your lives. <laughs> Looking oh, back over your haircuts, what, what do you look back on pictures and be like, what was I thinking back in my life? I had something similar. I was going to ask what everybody's favorite haircut was, but I like your question better. Um, <laughs> I had, uh, I'll have to dig up pictures and see if I can post it. I had, and my, my wife will tell you it's the worst ever. I had the soul patch going, 2008. Oh. Two, so I was much soul darker Patrol. then. Yeah, I was much darker then. Uh, so I had the dark hair, and then I had this going. Because I, I could grow the chin. I could grow the porno mustache, but I could not hook the two mm. adequately to do The Undertaker. Because believe me, I would have. So it's yeah. like, okay, do I want the porn stash, or do I want to just do the chin? Which I did just do the chin for a while. But uh, by far, what was the worst is when I did the chin and this. And then I, one day, I got a little overzealous with the, uh, with the razor. Yeah. And I thought, wait a minute, maybe I should just take the chin off and I just leave this. So I walked around like this for a little while and my wife was like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> it didn't last yeah. long. Put the it was like the on that. Beard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, I'm I... currently trying to grow my hair back out. So Ooh, longer than okay. It's ha- than it's been in like 10 years. It so. is. <laughs> I'm trying to go for long, yeah. So it's going to be messy for a bit. But that, I think my least favorite I, I loved having long hair our senior year of high school, but the in between when it was like in between the kind of shaggy and then I had to start pushing it back and putting the hat on and like trying to get it to go back and teasing it. That part was probably the worst it's ever looked. Um, it's terrible. Uh, that in between part, that's what I'm scared about with this too. It's like, Oh man, you got to push through it. Yep. Yeah, I know. That's the problem uh, is I'll get, I'll get fed up and, and, and cut it all. But, um, uh, I think what was really easy was when we used to just shave our heads all the time. So in college, I just buzzed my head. Me and my roommate, we just cut each other's hair because we were, had no money. And that was, it was easy. <laughs> but yeah, my favorite haircut was probably my long, shoulder length hair senior year. And then, um, yeah, I'll try to do that again. We'll see what happens. But, Ooh, and I love having I like a beard. It. My wife doesn't like it. Uh, so I don't anymore. But I do love having a good I can't grow this part. I can grow the sole. And it'll, it'll attach down here, but I, this part's always naked. So. Yeah, I yep. get I get everything else though, but <laughs> anyway, but I don't ever have beard anymore. So. 
I think uh, Daniel Bryan said in his book, uh, he's talked about, you know, when he when he had the beard and the hair, he, he wanted to grow his hair out, but he knew, OK, it gets super awkward and weird. So I'm going to grow my beard out at the same yeah. time. <laughs> and uh, of course, he became more famous for the beard than anything. Yeah. But really, he Good only boy. grew the beard out to distract from the hair yeah. in that awkward <laughs> stage. And, you know, and then they both became their own thing. And I thought that's uh, that's that's funny how it all worked out. Uh, yeah, I just, I look back at high school, you know, you had the long hair. I tried to grow my hair out long and uh, it just kind of looked like a, like a, uh, almost a bowl cut, almost Big show told you what <laughs> like. like a little Dutch boy. Uh, I mean, I, I thought it was cool at the time looking back on it. I don't love it, yeah. but, uh, I, I remember in freshman year of college, I couldn't get the mustache to grow in. Um, I really wanted the beard, but I just couldn't get the mustache to grow in. So I just, I did the full, the chin strap with sort of the bowl cut, which was just horrifying to look back at pictures of that. Uh, I hate those. I did just the little chin strap uh, for, for a little while. I'm not a fan of that look. Um, Here's a long hair, Travis. Oh, oh yeah. Cyber <laughs> with the hat on. That was uh, February of 2004. The John Stamos look. Stamos, baby, yeah. You can see that there. So. Did you have long hair when you went to WrestleMania 20? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It was All underneath right. the sock cap. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I grew my hair out for a long time, uh, about six, seven years ago. That's the longest I'd ever got. Uh, and that was, I just, I enjoyed doing that. Uh, I never really had the commitment to really grow it out before uh and then it, it's it's tough to make that cut to make the big cut after a while but had had some job interviews and i uh, finally had to trim it down you know it's still not short but uh i, I was still yeah, telling... kind of long like this though for what nine years eight nine years somewhat like that yeah um, I, I was telling randy well... on a text today i was thinking you know i think i definitely i'm gonna keep it out till SummerSlam at least but uh i'm thinking after that it might be time to just no, I'm not going to shave it. Uh, I'm not going to yeah, go just stone cold, but maybe normal. Uh, yeah. Haircut. Do a little short haircut for a while. Just to, you know, yeah. change up the gimmick for a little while. <laughs> well, you had a short when you got married and that was probably the last, that's the shortest has been in a long short has been since you've been since then. So yeah. Yep. I'm yep. already getting awkward in the back here. It's getting weird. So yeah, we're going, we're going for it. We'll see what happens. I mean, the honest truth is uh, I had another job in, in 2015 and um, it was probably to hear and um they told me my hair was too long uh, i i needed to cut it for this job i was supposed to be out doing presentations and stuff in front of people and they're like that's too long uh, and you need to cut the beard off too and i said and you know i needed the job so i did it and then i quit that job a few months later and i was like i'm growing my hair out and i'm growing my beard out <laughs> <laughs> I'm, nev I'm never gonna let that happen again. So uh, uh, that, that's what inspired me to grow my hair and beard out. Ever yeah. Since then. <laughs> I uh, I think the one time I didn't have like a uh, like an office job to go to was I was studying for the bar exam. So you you get out of law school and then you've got like the bar prep course for like two mm -hmm. three months before you take the bar. And I was I was gonna come I was gonna take a sabbatical from my office job in Michigan, come out and couch surf at my buddy's house take my law school classes and do the, do the bar exam two, three months later, I came out Christmas week and the bar wasn't, the bar exam wasn't until March 1st. So during that whole time, I was like, this is my only chance. Yeah. <laughs> to not have to wear a tie. This is my chance to like, see what I can do. That's right. So I grew my, my hair only got so far, Travis, probably right. where you're at now. Like, like I was this, yeah. right. Like I was like, okay, there's really no difference it's here or there. Ears, yeah. But I let this go too, just to see like, what can I put together at age, you know, 30 or whatever it was. And I had a lot going on under here, I looked at it. <laughs> but up here, I, like I said, I had the porno stash only and I had like Garfield going on. Like I just had a couple of whiskers. really long whiskers, but nothing up here that was going to like look like anything. So uh, I, we did FaceTime a lot. Uh, Deanna and I did FaceTime and she saw me with like white uh, uh, drywall or white uh, <laughs> mini blinds behind me. She, she could see the contrast and she was like, whoa. <laughs> what is happening? You know? So I just, I knew before she came, she flew out to like drive home with me. She's like, I'll fly out. We'll drive home together. And she flew out on March 2nd. And I knew that uh, by March 2nd, I had to go get a haircut ski and uh, give it all, give it the old shave. But I did give it, I did give it my best experiment and it was nowhere near 
anything you've got going on right now, unfortunately. <laughs> I, you know, every man needs to try at least once in their life. Uh, needs yeah. to go through that at least once. I usually do No Shave November and keep it till about January. But this year, I just decide not to, um, just because. But yeah, I, I like to grow a beard when I can, maybe once once a year, just you know, two or three months. But because uh, now I shave out almost every day, it can come in pretty thick, pretty good. So, but um, anyway, <laughs> my signature has always been sideburns, and uh, like I said, I almost. Almost disappeared. I almost disappeared with the men's cape, but it was good. But yeah, I've never had them shorter than probably right here, like since I've had them. So I wouldn't know what to do if I had negative sideburns or none or anything. I would be, I would feel like I would just die. They ask me at the barber every month. They're like, "You want to keep your sideburn, or you you want to you want us to cut off your sideburns?" And I'm like, "I'll, I'll keep what I can grow. I mean, they're not yeah. really there, but okay, yeah, I'll keep yeah, them." Yeah, I'd have to have something coming down at least. I couldn't go just straight across. I was no way. <laughs> every month, God, every, I, get, every, I get a haircut once or twice a year. Every five, six <laughs> weeks, somewhere in there. Jeez. Yeah, that's the good thing about growing it out. You save a ton of money that way. That's the best part about it. Well, I got uh, my cut about three weeks ago, and I told lady just do a little bit, and she only charged me for half, so that was nice. Because so, nice. she didn't do very much. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm trying to grow it out, so I'll do whatever you need to do, clean up the neck or whatever. And she's like, all right. She only charged me half, so I was like, huh, that's all, that sounds good. Go. Well, Randy, yeah, I tipped uh, her well, so I might as well give got a regular haircut. So. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew we would be talking about haircuts so much? But uh, that's Two what bits. that's what Randy Turco brings to the table here. Uh, certified member of the Pod Street crew and a contest winner. Now you can add that to your talking taker resume. Uh, Randy, tell the people where they can find you online. Uh, I mean, you're basically a professional podcaster in your own right at this point. You, you built this brand behind our back. With Steven. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> my, my Twitter handle is at Pokey's Little Dog. Uh, it is a takeoff of a Foo Fighters rarity, which is Foo Fighters did an instrumental called Pokey's Little Puppy way back when. And I that's too long to fit on a Twitter handle. So I did Pokey's Little Dog. And had I known that this was going to be something I'd be doing for 24 years now, I probably would have <laughs> thought of something a little better than Pokey's Little Dog. But here we are at Pokey's Little Dog. So uh, I tweet about my horror movies I watch. I usually watch about four or five on the treadmill every week. So I tweet about those. I tweet about random JFK stuff. You see cardboard JFK behind me. So random horror, random JFK, random nostalgia stuff, Undertaker stuff all the time. Minnesota and then Gophers. Right, Minnesota Gophers, <laughs> yes. They're my, it's my alma mater, so I'm all about Minnesota college sports. I just uh, Minnesota is very uh, has a tradition of getting their heart ripped out of their rear end. Mm in sports. And I experienced that on Saturday. We lost the national championship game in hockey, despite being yeah. the number one overall team in the nation for like the fifth year in a row. So right in line with our, uh, our tradition. Uh, so I tweet about a lot of that <laughs> stuff. And then um, you're right. Steven and I do once a month. I'm, I kind of guest and watch along with Steven Zeman on uh, collecting dead man. We do, we're in the middle of the gimmick matches, all of Undertaker's gimmick matches. It's like a right. four-year project. It's going to take a long time. We haven't even, we haven't even, we're too scared to get into the coffin matches and the Hell in a Cell <laughs> matches. Like we got a long way to go, but we're just picking away at like the tables matches and stuff like that for now. So every month we do one of those. And then I am, can we say maybe I'm the Santa Claus or maybe I'm the Easter Bunny here on Talking Taker. I show up about once a year. We have a good time, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. We're having a good time. Four Timers Club. I'm sure we will get you the Five Timers jacket here eventually. Uh, we'll, we'll find a way to do that. Get your Ribera jacket. Uh, <laughs> that'd be sick. Uh, but we uh, we do. Purple we, and black. We love having you around. You're one of our oldest uh, uh, fans and followers and a true friend of the show now that we've had it here. I can't wait to uh, meet you in person here this August at, at the SummerSlam. Uh, we're crossing our fingers, hoping a uh, One Dead Man show gets announced for SummerSlam yeah. weekend. Uh, I mean, if it uh, if it doesn't, we're just going to have to track Mark Calloway down uh, at his hotel or something and <laughs> kidnap him, make our own One Dead Man show. We can we can go to SmackDown. That, I don't know if that'll be as fun though. But I we're guess. really we're really putting our eggs in the one dead man show basket. Kidding. I'm hoping for it. Yeah, uh, I'm going to SmackDown in Knoxville May 12th. So there we go. It should right. allegedly allegedly the week of the draft. They're bringing that back. So oh. maybe they'll draft Taker. We'll see. Oh. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Could, yeah, everyone's Triple eligible. H said yeah. it's a game changer. It's going to change the game, That's and right. everybody's available. So who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll put Taker. Maybe, maybe they'll, they'll put Titus. On commentary. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Maybe they'll draft you if everyone's eligible. Maybe. Pulling from the crowd like Santino Morella. That's right. 
Uh, man, very, very fun. Thank you for joining us, Randy. Uh, thanks to all of you out there for listening and watching along with us. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, the best way to support the show, of course, is to listen and share the show with your friends, but also to head over to manscaped.com. Use the code TAKEREASY, T-A-K-E-R-E-A-S-Y, all one word, for 20% off and free shipping. Your entire purchase, whether it's some replacement blades, whether it's some lotion, some boxers, a t-shirt, if you want to go all out for one of the performance packages and get uh, all set up on Manscaped gear, the three of us... Uh, we're not just uh, sponsored here. We are true supporters yeah. of the line. And so we encourage you to join the Manscaped Revolution and get uh, uh, put all of your old products, bury them in the ground, make them rest in peace, give them the last ride. Head over to manscaped.com for 20% off with the code TAKEREASY. And uh, this is a bonus episode, so it's dropping here in the middle of the month. Uh, Travis and I will be back May 1st with our traditional monthly episode of Talking Taker. Look for us, uh, of course, you know where to follow us, at Talking Taker, on all the social media pages. Uh, but we'll be back again for that, and we'll be back throughout the year. But you just never know when we might drop some of these bonus episodes, might drop some more YouTube content and all that good stuff. But, uh, yeah, thanks again, Randy. Great idea, great concept. Had a blast doing these matches. Uh, we appreciate you joining us, and we appreciate your friendship. Thanks for having me, guys. I look forward to coming back on in, uh, in another year, but hopefully a little sooner, maybe maybe some bonus content this summer. Absolutely. There will, there will definitely be some bonus content in summer, so for sure oh no doubt see how many guys you can get to sweet you on the street okay. yeah i will i'll carry on your tradition probably <laughs> please do i can't be there please do it especially if they have an nwo shirt of course that's they just yeah won't that's throw the it up. <laughs> what, me? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you anyway uh ladies and gentlemen tell us what your favorite haircut is of your own or of takers i mean what fine what's your favorite facial hair of taker that's where we're going nowadays that's where we are <laughs> we are to. there we are there. We've exhausted his entire career. We're doing everything else. We're doing all kind of cool stuff. So, yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, if you were there at that SmackDown and at WrestleMania 28, we want to hear from you. Only if you were at both of them, though. So, what were you thinking? Uh, double haircut, double dose of take your haircut. So, anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe out there. And as always, <laughs> watch out for those. As always, take her easy. <laughs> uh.